So um, hi everyone, I was going to say evening, it's, it's evening here in the UK. Uh, my name is Stephen Corker, I'm a professional football player for, for Wigan Athletic in, in the Championship and um, I play as a, a central defender. Very good. Can you talk to the kids because we've already had a, a few questions emailed to us and they wanted to know, did you always want to be a professional footballer growing up? From the age of around seven or eight, I definitely wanted to be a professional football player. So my favourite team growing up was Arsenal. I used to grow up watching the likes of Thierry Henry, Robert Pires, probably guys that you're not so familiar with now as you look fairly young, the faces I can see on the call. Um, so I, I fell in love with the game from a very young age and I started, started playing at seven. And at the age of nine, I went on my first trial with Brentford and I was rejected. Then I went a lot of, uh, on trial at Chelsea, Reading, got rejected. Um, I had five different trials where I was, I was turned down. And then at the age of 15, just when my mum was telling me I need to focus on my exams and focus on school and prepare for life, not as a footballer, I then got my chance with, with Tottenham. And uh, I joined Tottenham Hotspur. And uh, in the space of, in the space of, so I joined at 15 and by the time I was 20, I would played over 100 professional games. I played uh, seasons in the Premier League um, and I was, I would played uh, for England. So things changed really quickly for me, um, but it was, the line was, was so thin. I was about to give up, um, not through choice, but sort of, you know, the, the, the pressures of having to work and having to, to find another, another, another way to earn money. Now, I know we've had a lot of, we're going to kind of jump around with the questions here to try and get all of everyone's questions in here. And guys, these are great questions you're sending in via email and in the chat. But our kids wanted to know, what was that like representing Sierra Leone on a, on a national, international level like that? Can you describe amazing. that? Yeah, amazing. So um, I got the chance to play um, at the AFCON, which was incredible, over in Cameroon. Um, the only the only slight downer was the fact that it was it was not during Corona, but it was towards the end of the pandemic. So we still had um, you know limited seating in, in in the stands and stuff like that because in Africa football is amazing. Like the fans love the football. So you normally 70,000 seat is a full. So that was a slightly different experience, but but just playing for for my country, a country which is very close to my heart. Um, when I was 22, 23, I, I built a school there for you know 400 children, and you know I've always felt like that uh, you know that Sierra, I have such a, a strong connection with them. So when I was given the opportunity to play for them, um, I, I, I snapped it up, and and now I've moved on to to become their captain, and it's a real a real honor, a real privilege. You, you talk about that honor and you talk about that privilege and you also wear the hat of a philanthropist because you've given back quite a bit. And can you talk a little bit about the, I don't want to say the pressures, but the responsibility you had mentioned that as far as you're, you're on top of your game and how important it is to give back who are in need, give back to those less fortunate or even give back to the younger people like you are doing right now. Why is that such an important thing? For me, that's, that's, a huge purpose of mine so around the age of 26 I was suffering with with addiction suffering with, with severe depression and um, my career was was almost over I I had to had to walk away from from contracts at clubs and I was left to train on my own for six months so during that time that sort of that six months of reflection I, I started to think what am I doing it for who am I doing it for and um why? Why do? Why do I? Why do I want to be back in football so much? So, I looked at them reasons, and one of my big reasons was my son. 
uh, my son, my family, and and another huge reason was to 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 give a voice to the voiceless. You know, there's many people in in and around the world, especially in in air, in in let's say poorer countries such as Sierra Leone, where you know they don't have a voice, they're unable to speak, they they don't have mobile phones. You know, they're 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 stuck out in the villages. So I thought if I can if I can put Sierra Leone on the map and represent Sierra Leone in a good light, then um, I feel that's that's something that um, almost a bit like a, a legacy, if you like, you know, because we can, as footballers, you know, you you can often drive nice cars and stuff like that, but that's that, that doesn't mean anything, you know. I want to leave behind, um, uh, you know, some some form of legacy, whatever that looks like, and and I think by giving children that opportunity, um, yeah, it, it certainly makes me me feel me feel good. So um, selfishly, I, I enjoy it. Well, you certainly are leaving behind a wonderful legacy. And we'll talk about a little bit more about on, on the field stuff as well. And we'll come back to the philanthropic in a second. Um, our kids wanted to know, what was it like coming home to England after uh, the experience in Turkey to where now you're playing for Wigan Athletic? So what what is that like being home in England? Well, I'll tell you, the first first thing about it is, is I'm sure a lot of you have seen the news and, and the earthquakes in Turkey, just how how crazy life is, because I was living in that exact city this time last year. So it's kind of crazy how life takes me on these journeys and moves me from one place to another. So the timing was right for me to come back to England. Um, I came back in December and um, I, it's my home. You know, it's where I it's where I grew up. Um, it's It's where my friends are. It's where my family are. Um, so for me, um, it, it's, it offers a lot of su- support, you know, a lot of recovery, you know, a lot of my life is based around recovery and, and making sure that, that um, I'm the best version of myself on and off the pitch. So England offers me that. So coming back to England was, was nice, but I feel under pressure because, you know, coming back after four years away, everyone's asking the question, has he still got it? Is he still good enough? And, uh, I feel on trial, even at the age of 31, I still feel like, I'm again on trial um, and I'm having to prove myself to, to the newspapers, to the fans and, and also to some players. So um, it's good, but it was, I was a little bit nervous to, to be honest, especially the first few days. We know you have a lot uh, on the horizon as far as your career. And we know that the sun hasn't set not even close on your career. And we're excited to keep up with it with Wigan Athletic. And we'll send uh, some information where you guys can find uh, how to view those games coming up, those those students not in the United Kingdom. So uh, one of our students, they wanted to know, and again, we're all over the place with these questions. They wanted to know, what was your favorite subject growing up in school? Well, I want to say PE. Because it was the it was the one where I could play football and, and get outside and do athletics and stuff. But um, aside from that, um, we used to do a, a class called a design technology, and um, I really I really used to like that. Just being hands on, being creative. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, I did okay in my exams. Um, I've sort of actually done more education like during my career than I probably did um, in school because as as a youngster I just wanted to play football and then as I've got a little bit older I realised actually just how important my education is when wanting to start businesses when wanting to do interviews you know the use of language and communication skills so I kind of learned it a little bit later so if I was to give any sort of suggestions to you to you guys on here I would say yeah like learn as much as you can whilst you're young because um knowledge uh very often is is is, is power you know just well said um one of our kids they wanted to know what was the most exciting moment in your career as of yet probably playing in the olympics was the best for me so i played in the, the london 2012 olympics and and that was incredible so we got to meet um, LeBron James, got to see Kobe Bryant. Um, never saw Usain Bolt, unfortunately, but was in the same sort of Olympic village as him. And um, we, yeah, we, we went out there. We played at Old Trafford, which is Man United Stadium. And, and um, we had Wembley and incredible experience. We had not only England behind us, but the whole United Kingdom behind us. And, um, you know, packed out stadiums and... It was great. That was that was for me the most exciting. Unfortunately, we got knocked out just before the medal stage, so I haven't got a uh, an Olympic medal to to show you guys. But um, still, the experience and is definitely probably for me the most exciting one. 
That that is unimaginable. That's unreal. How many how many uh, were in attendance when when you guys were playing? Just give us an Nine, idea. about ninety thousand. Yeah. Eesh. And uh, that piggybacks off of one of our students' questions that was emailed to me uh, last week, and they wanted to know, how do you overcome anxiety when it comes to playing in front of so many people? So it's a really good question. So when I was younger, I suffered with that a lot. I used to get really nervous, especially I mentioned earlier about the trials that I went on. Um, a big part of why I failed at those trials or, or was rejected from those trials, I should say, is because I was so nervous. So the, the, the skills and the tools that I use today um, are I look at what I can control and I, I put that aside from what I can't control. So when I'm heading out there on the pitch on Saturday, I will look at what can I, can I control um, giving 100% today? Yes, that's, that's, that's within my power. I can give 100%. Can I run until I drop? Yes, that's, that's within my power. Can I give 100% in my tackles? Again, it's, it's in my control. Can I predict or control what the score is going to be? No, because there's 21 other players on the pitch. You've got three referees. You've got the assistants and, and VAR and all of that stuff to go with it. So that's something I can't control. So I tried to kind of break it down and go, you know what? I'm going to give my best today. I'm going to give 100%. I'm going to run as hard as I can. I'm going to work as hard as I can. And at the end of the game, if we won, lost or drew, um, I've given my best and, that, and that's all I can do. And it really kind of just settles it down for me because when I'm thinking before the game about wanting to be messy and trying to do this and trying to do that, I, I get myself all nervous. So I just kind of keep things simple. Um, so I'll just uh, keep it rolling with the questions and guys, we'll try and get us get through as many questions as possible. Um, about 10 more minutes, then we'll let everyone go. Um, somebody had emailed, they had wanted to know who's your favorite soccer player and why? All time. All time. Uh, Thierry Henry, for sure. Thierry Henry was my favorite just because I was able to watch him growing up. He was he was amazing and I got to play against him. He went actually on, he went he went to America and then he came back on loan to Arsenal. And um, I was 19 at the time and I was playing for Swansea, Swansea City in the Premier League. And he came on as a substitute. So for me, that was incredible to play against my, you know, idol and um I would have to mention Ronaldinho as well because he was just such a joy to watch. You know, one of the, one of the best players ever. That's exciting stuff. And um, the, the one of the kids they wanted to know: Can you describe your moment when uh, you became a professional soccer player? What is that transition from going from amateur to like this is it? You're all in. This is your life. How how does that happen from amateur to professional in uh, professional soccer in England? Yeah, it happens pretty quickly. As soon as you leave school at the age of 16, you, you step straight into the academy and you become full time. So at the academy, you, you, you sort of play while studying for, for two years. Um, but if you're good enough, then you're old enough. So from the age of 16, even 15, some players go on to play first team football. I made my debut at 17, which was as a defender was, was really young. So um Education kind of gets pushed aside in England. It's, it's very different to, to the States where you're, it's compulsory in England. It's, it's very relaxed. Um, and there's actually a lot of campaigns to change that because a lot of players are making their debut very young and then at 18, 19, 20, falling out of the game for whatever reasons, could be personal reasons, could be injuries or could be just, a, you know, that they don't like it. And um and they've got nothing to fall back on. So, so in football in England, it changed it really quick. I, I left school at sixteen. I was straight into full time, and at seventeen, I was I was playing league football. So it happened really quick. And uh, feeling wise, felt amazing. I was I was living at that time my dream. You know, it really was my dream. Did you ever have a moment where you're like, "Wow, I made it!" Like this, the, I, I'm here. I'm guessing it's like in front of thousands of people when that hits, but. Did you ever have one of those moments? No, no, no. I actually never experienced it. I've always felt that I'm not good enough. I've always felt that um, it's it's not enough. I need more. I need more. So even when I played for England, I actually scored on my on my debut for England, and coming off the pitch, it still wasn't enough. I still didn't feel like I I was enough. And um, even at the age of 31, I'm still here, as I said, proving myself. Um, so I've never had that moment, unfortunately. Um, but I guess it comes with inner peace, you know, it just comes with, with, with that inner peace rather than searching for someone else to tell me that I've made it. It will just come one day where I'm 
where I'm finally at peace with myself. It sounds like it's kind of like a, what they call a refer to as imposter syndrome that like, no matter how good you are or what level you're at, I mean, you're for gosh sakes at the Olympic level and still not having that. So it's, I'm sure that's indicative. I've read that like people, even like Michael Jordan, like, like the greatest of the greats of different sports have always had that, you know, similar thing where they never felt like they made it. Um, we have a question from a student in Italy. Uh, I, he's asking me to ask for him. Um, he wanted to know, have you ever exchanged a shirt with some other player in any match you've ever been in? Oh, so of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, at home, I've got, um, right now I'm not actually at my, my home. My home is in London. I'm up, I'm up north while I'm playing here. So in my home, I have like a, a room with uh, a few shirts up and uh on that wall, we have Yaya Torre, uh, Aguero, Rio Ferdinand. Um, who else do we have? Fia Walker, if some of you remember him. Um, Drogba, Didier Drogba. Um, yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some good names on there. And um, yeah, there's, there, it's a, it's a really nice room. It's a really cool room. Yeah. That is exciting stuff. We have a question from Pau, and Pau is in Spain. Pau, you can unmute to ask. Uh, you had a very good question for Stephen. Yeah, um, I I would like to know um, who was the most talented or the most difficult player to cover you have ever had to like cover. To play against, um, to play against, it would probably be uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He was probably the most difficult. Um, Really, really good player, um, strong, uh, technically amazing. And uh, yeah, I tell you what, I actually played against him on my England debut as well. And um, he scored four that day, four. He, I don't know if you guys have seen it or if you remember, if you haven't seen it, YouTube it afterwards. He scored an overhead kick from about 40 yards out. Um, most incredible goal. So for me, he was he was the most difficult to, to play against, definitely. I mean, some of the stuff that you guys do out there, you know, on the, as you refer to the pitch, sorry, I'm from Las Vegas, yeah. but um, <laughs> it defies physics, like the, the way yeah. the ball can truly like curve and be bent and all that. Uh, so yeah. we'll go with a couple more student questions. This is Uzario. Uzario is in Portugal. Uzario, you can unmute to ask uh, your question. Go ahead, Uzario. Oh, well, he's muted. He wanted to know, what do you think about Neymar? Neymar, I think Neymar is an incredible player. I got to play against him in the Olympics, actually. We played a, a friendly game against Brazil before, like, before the Olympics started and Neymar was playing. He, he, like incredible player. Um, I like his style because he plays with such freedom and he's, he's a joy to watch, which I think in modern day football it's difficult to find that. So going back, you had Ronaldinho and many others, but Modern day football, Neymar is probably the most, you know, free playing footballer, the one who enjoys it the most. Um, let, or let's say he's the most enjoyable to watch. I'm not sure he actually enjoys it because he's spoken openly about, uh, you know, his, his struggles within the game. But um, I, 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 I like watching him for sure. Very good. Very good. Uh, we'll go with a few more student questions. This is Hugo in Spain. Hugo, um, you should be able to unmute to ask, friend. Go ahead. Hi, uh, what uh, player would you like to defend of all time? So, sorry, what was that? I think he was asking what player, uh, if any player uh, in all the history of soccer, who would you like to defend against? Lionel Messi, for sure. Lionel Messi. I never got the chance to play against him. Obviously, he was, when I was in the Premier League, he was in La Liga, and then he's obviously now in League One in France, but for sure, Lionel Messi. I actually see you have a, you have a PSG top on there so i'm sure you're a messy fan as well yeah so he's, he's for me he's the greatest of all time i think we actually might have a couple of argentinian kids on here but um that oh, okay. is awesome so uh one of our students in italy they want to know would you rather prefer would you prefer scoring a goal or having a really good tackle and saving saving a goal a goal definitely a goal, <laughs> <laughs> a robber goal. yeah I didn't expect that from a defender. I didn't expect no, that. No, goal. It's, it's, it, there's no feeling like it, honestly. There's no feeling. When the ball hits the back of the net and, and the crowd roar and oh, amazing feeling. It's pretty surreal. Oh, that's good. Okay, so Uzario will have our final student question. Again, Uzario is in Portugal. Go ahead and ask, Fred. Okay. Uh, 
you know Liverpool uh, is on a bad moment, but I have a question to you. Do you think you will make the difference on the defense if you play on Liverpool uh, on that moment, uh, on your prime mode? It's a good question. It's a tough question. So I've been privileged enough to play for Liverpool, but I think the defenders they got there right now are like world class. You know, I played with Van Dijk at Southampton, uh, Matip, uh, Joe Gomez. Uh, I'm familiar with a lot of their players. I I don't think I could do a better job than them right now. I would love to say I could, but but I don't feel I could. I a part of um, you know, I guess my journey is obviously owning like my level. My my level's there. I think their level's there, you know, but in work rate, in effort, I, I match I match everyone, if, if not go further. So um, sometimes we're just not as naturally gifted, as talented as, as some other players, but, you know, we try to make up for it in, in our work rate, in our desire to, to, to be the best. You could probably double as a politician with that answer. That was, that was spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> so well put, Di- diplomacy intact. Okay, so our final question will come from me before I let you go. Is there any advice as these kids kind of go on to the next level, a next chapter of their lives? What kind of advice would you give for them as someone who's been at the at the very bottom all the way to the Olympic level? Um, what kind of advice do you have for them, whether they want to go into soccer or something completely different? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question. I can answer it in, in two words. Be yourself. Um, for me, that's that's the most important thing. I see it happen all the time where, especially players, they get caught trying to be someone else because one coach tells you to play this way and the next coach tells you to play that way. And you go to school and the teachers tell you, you must be this, you must do this. And the biggest thing for me, the best players I've played with in the world and some of the best people I've been been amongst, they're always themselves in, in all areas. So, um, you know, that means that you treat the the janitor the same way that you treat the president and you treat the president the same way you treat the janitor um, all the way through. So for me, that would be my, my biggest advice. I got lost. I got caught up trying to to please everybody else when actually I just needed to to continue to be myself. So um, that would be my, 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 my words of wisdom or whatever you want to call it. And um, of course, um, the last thing I'd say is, is that hard work beats talent. So you have to work hard. You can have all the talent in the world, but without the, without the hard work, it's, it's, it goes to nothing. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Very good, sir. We appreciate you so much, guys. Check out Wigan Athletic. They have a, a game this Saturday. You guys are playing uh, Birmingham, right? Yeah, we, yeah, we're playing Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. On, on That's Saturday, exciting. So. Yeah. And for all of you like wanting to do like, uh, you know, or want to go around the football side, you know, we have a we have a company called Behind the White Lines. We're, we're launching that like um, in the next few months. And it's going to be loads of players basically giving this side of football, you know, the real side of football. So um, I'll send it over to Ralph and he can send it out to you guys and you can see plenty more of this. Um, yeah. And basically just uh, our last year, I just want to say thank, thanks to Ralph for the opportunity to talk with you guys. And I wish you all the best. Thank you, Stephen. We all appreciate you. And guys, we have a lot of up to upcoming guests, uh, drone pilots, military helicopter pilots. Uh, we're also going to have a Nagasaki bomb survivor in April. So definitely be on the lookout for that, uh, edutainmentlearning.com. So before we let you go, Stephen, I'm going to allow everyone to unmute. And then I'm going to end the meeting for all. Can we all say thank you to Mr. Stephen Cocker for taking time out of his very valuable day and wish him luck because the season is still going. Good luck and thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank